Do you know there is a way to date the Great Pyramid from where it used to be? That's right, from where it used to be. I mean, it's 30 degrees north of the equator. Or is it? It seems to have shifted slightly. We can take the shift into account to date the Great Pyramid and give it a minimum age. I think it's the best way, the best way to date the Great Pyramid. So let's check this out. Do you know that this is the first time that I've seen actual evidence that the Great Pyramid is far older than it is said to be? Previous evidence discussed was the presence of a Sphinx, which appears to be guarding the Osiris shaft, which can only have been the tomb of King Osiris, which I dated in an earlier video to one of the Nephilim kings of pre-Egypt. Authors such as Robert Temple and others championed the idea of the Sphinx as a dog, and I noticed that the Sphinx is therefore a dog guarding its owner, who would have been curled up in the fetal position in one of the giant granite sarcophagi now missing from the shaft behind the Sphinx, but once seen. The fetal position was employed in human burial in pre-Egypt. Later Stone Age peoples arrived, disposed of the bones, and inserted bull bones based on the Indo-European bull cult of Eurasia. Thus we have the conundrum of high-tech high sarcophagi associated with Stone Age burial. The idea of giant kings being buried in these sarcophagi accord with Egyptian history, which state that first gods and then demigods ruled Egypt, which implies gradual interbreeding occurred between giants and humans, and intellect decreased, explaining the collapse of high-tech civilization into superstition and ritual. In nature, generally, the bigger the creature, the longer it lives. These gods had very long telomeres and extra stem cells leading to longer lives, inhuman lives remembered in the Bible as the corrupted calculations of the ages of the patriarchs, who are perhaps based upon the giants who ruled Egypt pre-deluge. I discovered that they knew the number of human chromosomes, 23 pairs or 46, with Eve being cloned from a chromosome, but an ancient author priest post-deluge failing to comprehend the text, examined the diagrams of chromosomes and substituted the word rib, as that is the anatomy they resemble. This is the smoking gun, the ultimate proof of the lost high-technology super-civilization. Man, after all, does not have one less rib than woman, as the Bible indicates. But he does have one less chromosome, which looks like a rib. This implies ancient microscopes and ancient cloning in a high-tech world undreamed of. I never fully believed in a high-tech lost civilization until this point in my investigation, despite making many videos championing the idea. Now I do, with everything, as there is no longer any other choice in the matter. What was the deluge? It was a series of catastrophes across tens of thousands of years, but it is now remembered as a great disaster which ended a worldwide civilization in which all the world was one language. The main force that ended the deluge was the eruption of Toba, possibly triggered by Mother Nature, or I would suggest purposefully by the deranged, childlike giant ruler of a super civilization to destroy and confound his enemies utterly before his own demise. If so, the operation was successful. The st so-called Stone Age is a lie, as there are parts of the world today, such as tribes of New Guinea and Brazil, who are still in the Stone Age making Stone Age tools. Are we in the Stone Age now, then? Rather, only part of the world slipped into the Stone Ages. These tools are recovered, but invariably from after the Toba eruption of 70,000 years ago. Since Stone Age tools appear in this time, for much of the 20th century it was thought that Homo sapiens must have evolved not before this time. You see, all science is based on assumptions that someone has made, which have been accepted. But humans are millions of years old, so old we cannot find our precursors. Otherwise, they would be in the fossil record. In India, mankind survived as before for tens of thousands of years longer, perhaps until the present day, retaining at least 
knowledge of high technology. Before this was an age undreamed of, technology far higher than we can even imagine, even today with our so-called sophisticated world, which is actually incredibly unsophisticated and low-tech, compared to what ancient record describes. The philosophers and wise men of this great time, now remembered as Atlantis, would make the writings of an Aristotle or Plato or the wisest Egyptian sage seem like the scribblings of arrogant schoolchildren. Imagine a Seneca, or Marcus Aurelius, or Confucius multiplied by ten, incredibly large heads with massive IQs, yet now all their great writings are lost in the oblivion of the ages. Imagine how profound their teachings and remarkable their quotations must have been. The Great Pyramid seems to be a veneration of the number 3, but I would suggest this was really a veneration of the number Pi, which later Stone Age peoples degraded into the worship of the easily digestible number 3. I suggest the whole complex was generated by computer by various constants such as Pi. This is the only way the entire complex could contain so many mathematical constants. It is based on a computer diagram generated by software. There is no other way it could have been designed with complementary incorporation of so many mathematical ideas. This is why, in a pre-computer age a hundred years ago, pyramidologists imagined that God himself must have constructed the Great Pyramids. They were thinking, really, about a godlike mind. The entire building project was project managed by computer program. The houses of the so-called pyramid builders championed by current archaeology are actually possibly houses of the much later pyramid repairers and renovators as well as mastaba builders. These were the men who slopped cement between the casing stones of the outer layer of the Great Pyramid, as these were in decay even in the time of Khufu. As we shall see, there is no way on earth these could be the houses of the actual builders, as Khufu's civilization did not possess the knowledge for accurate placement of the pyramid. And that is what it all boils down to, the key to the whole riddle. The Great Pyramid was placed 30 degrees north of the equator. In some of my earliest videos, I discussed carbon dating results. We have the tests conducted between the 60s and 80s, which conclude that mortar containing carbon was slopped between casing stones in Khufu's time. But repairs on the Sphinx carried out in the Old Kingdom, as pointed out by several authors, suggest Khufu was only a major league renovator of the entire area. There is noticeably no mortar found in the interior, probably the oldest part of the structure. The joins were so precise here that none was required. And now we come to the dating. This is the very first time a minimum date has been established based on this technique, which agrees with current geophysics. If it is wrong, and the real date is more recent, then Charles Hepgood is correct, and huge pole shifts happen often. Also, this is the the first time this uh, technique has been revealed because it is new. The Great Pyramid's location is actually 29.9792 degrees north of the equator. The coincidence that this is a third of the way up the Earth from the present pole cannot be ignored. Obviously, more veneration of the number three. It shows a complete knowledge of the size of the Earth, yet it's not exactly 30 degrees as it should be. Why not? A dramatic pole shift, had it occurred after the construction of the pyramid, would of course dramatically upset the following calculation. But let us say the conventional ideas are correct and this never happened. Instead, what happened was a more gradual shift. For instance, for years, the pole has been heading 10 centimeters a year towards Hudson Bay. It is more recently heading 17 centimeters a year towards London. One degree of latitude represents 111 kilometers. As I proceeded in the calculations, I became a little spooked that this must be somehow guided, for the number 111 represents Hermes Trismegistus, three gods all equal, 
whose title I discovered inscribed on the Sphinx under the name of Three Gods, which I wrote about in my first book, on the pyramids. Furthermore, the discrepancy in the degree shift between 29.9792 degrees and 30 degrees north, where the pyramid must have originally been placed, represents a shift of 3.33 kilometers, again a veneration of the sacred 3 times 3 found at Giza. I think that usually when synchronisms like this occur, it probably means that one is onto something really good. Assuming a fast 17 centimeter direct shift a year, the calculation of shift in a direct line thus gives a minimum age of the pyramid of 19,588 years since the design of the Giza complex and its placement there. Of course, the pole meanders about, meaning the real age is ultimately way higher. I believe placing it in the sweet spot of 120k to 70k years before the present, the time of the lost super civilization. This is when the Great Pyramid was originally built. We today look at a structure renovated in Khufu's time and then destroyed to build part of Old Cairo. Charles Hapgood suggested the Ice Age pole was Hudson Bay. In a previous video, I suggested it was near the British Isles. Simply look at the distribution of ice and mammoths around Europe to see why. See how the mammoths avoided areas now hospitable, as if they were inhospitable, and vice versa. But then again, no one really knows. Perhaps that pole shift didn't happen. And if it didn't happen, then this calculation has something to it. The calculation does not include the movement of precession. It is simply a simple way of possibly indicating the terrific age of this enormous structure, movement from 30 degrees north. Quite possibly the pyramids were ruined and partly rebuilt by the old kingdom Khufu, who then ordered the alchemists to construct a sarcophagus inside the king's chamber, which was cast in stone as one would cast cement, because it can't fit through the door. Yet, hardening into rock, the literal philosopher's stone well that was that was so interesting you know i just i just uh i just love that i love that segment that was brilliant guys check out my next video don't forget to sub and thumbs up you know i don't know there's something happening with youtube it's a bit weird i'm not getting the, the number of views that i should be getting uh with the the number of subscribers that i have it's it's a bit weird and some people are saying that uh, they're not noticing the notifications. The notifications aren't showing up. Something weird is going on. So make sure to sub and hit the thumbs up button because it's the only way. It's the only way, guys. Hey, I have to get this message out there. This is this is just so important, this message, you know, that there, there was a lost super civilization. The Great Pyramid proves it. I mean, the Great Pyramid proves it. I mean, Newton. Newton knew that the Great Pyramid was, must have been built by the ancient giants, that it was pre-Diluvian. He knew all this stuff. He knew it. it, it it's intrinsic. Um, so, but we don't know it. And that's the thing. We're not clever enough to know it. We're not clever enough to appreciate it. We think that the Great Pyramid w was, was built by Stone Age people. It wasn't. I used to think it was built by Stone Age people. And it's taken me until a, about a month uh, to realize, well, it actually must be about at least 50,000 years old or more, and it's been reworked, 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 redone, redone, redone. It's been redone hundreds of times. And it, it's, it's absolutely ancient. So, guys, thanks for watching. Sub and thumbs up, and I'll catch you next time. Oh, don't forget my book. It's uh, over there somewhere. Uh, check it out on Amazon. Woo! I've got a few more reviews on the UK Amazon. I'll have to check that one out. Okay, guys, so check that out, Confessions of the Gods, and I'll see you next time.